I think I have three addictions left in life. <laughs> Caffeine, oh, yeah. oxytocin, <laughs> and God's work. <laughs> Sam did a wonderful job. Yes, he did. He did. Yes. You know, when thinking of magnifying the Word of God, the Word is magnified. When we think of that verse, uh, you know, magnify the Word above all His name, you know, it's, it's, it's practical application has stuff. so many uh, different ways we could practically apply that. But one of the greatest ways is understanding that Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. Therefore, that's why he has a name above every name. Um, what I want to get into today with my teaching is uh, the word is to be eaten. To be eaten. Um, that's why we'll read Jeremiah 15, verse 16, which was in Sam's teaching as well. And it says, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. And what I, want to, what I want to do with this teaching is I want to give you a history coming up to this point with Jeremiah particularly. We won't be in the book of Jeremiah a lot, but we'll give a brief history coming up to this verse, what he possibly meant by this verse, and then some applications on for us today. And so, in order to do that, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 34. We're going to be looking at the life of a man, uh, a king named Josiah. Awesome king. Um, a brief history of what happened before Josiah is Josiah had a grandfather who was a king. His name was Manasseh. And he was a bad king. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, it says. And then he had a father. His name was Amon. Um, and he too did much evil in the sight of the Lord. And they had done so much evil in the sight of the Lord that Jerusalem had pretty much in ruin because of their leadership. Um, the city itself is in ruin. The temple is in ruin. Uh, it's just a, a very, very tough time for them. Uh, also kind of like Jeremiah, who was a prophet during the Babylonian captivity. That's kind of a tough time. Talk about uh, being in the valleys of life sometimes. Well, Jeremiah is one who could definitely um, attest to some of that. But let's read about Josiah's life. And it says in 2 Chronicles 34, verse 1, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. Teach that at Children's Fellowship. <laughs> verse 2, and he did that which was what? Right, right. in the sight of the Lord. An eight-year-old doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, so he would be 16 at this time, while he was yet young, he began to seek after God, the God of David, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images. So, 16-year-old King Josiah starts making reforms, starts making legislations within his government, his kingdom. And one uh, reform that he does is he takes away idolatry. All the carved images, all the molten images are gone. So, what he knows of the Lord he is standing upon and trying to apply in his life. Verse 4. They break down the altars of Balaam in his presence, and the images that were on the high above them, he cut down in the groves and the carved images, the molten images he break in pieces, he made dust of them, wow, and strode it upon the graves of them that sacrificed unto them. Wow, that's a, that's an intense message. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon the altars. 
cleanse Judah and Jerusalem. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon, even unto Naphtali with their mattocks round about. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves, and had beaten the graven images into powder, and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned unto Jerusalem. So, one of his first acts when he's 16 years old as a king that wants to walk after his father David and does right in the sight of the Lord as he gets rid of idolatry. It's one of his first legislative reforms in this, uh, in this section. Now let's read what else he does. Verse 8. Now in the 18th year of his reign, he should be 18 plus 8, what is that? 26. 26? 26 years old. It's young adults teaching, right? <laughs> With children's fellowship to teen fellowship to young adults teaching. <laughs> <laughs> now in the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, and Messiah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Jehoahaz, has the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. Now, of course, the house needs repair because the house has been very neglected. His grandfather neglected it. His father neglected it. But he did not. And so he starts making reforms, legislations to rid the land of idolatry. And here, he's starting to rebuild the temple. So let's see what he does with this temple. Verse 9. And when they came to Hilkiah the high priest. Remember the name Hilkiah. Hilkiah the high priest. They delivered the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites that kept the doors had gathered of the hand of Manasseh. So the Levites are those who are supposed to take care of the house. But the house is neglected, therefore not a lot of funds are coming in, so the house is becoming more and more in shambles, pretty much. Which the Levites that kept the doors had gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, and of all the remnant of Israel, and of all Judah and Benjamin, and they returned it to Jerusalem. And they put it in the hand of the workmen that had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they gave it to the workmen that wrought in the house of the Lord to repair and mend the house. So they're getting to work, rebuilding the temple, renovating the floors, you know. <laughs> got a new AV system, mixer board or whatever, you know. They got a projection screen now. <laughs> Verse 11. Even to the artificers and the builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings and to floor the houses with which the kings of Judah had destroyed, being Manasseh and Amon, his fathers. Verse 12, And men did the work faithfully, and the overseers of them, or Jahath, Obadiah, the Levites, the son of Merari, Zechariah, Meshulam, the sons of the Kohathites, to set it forward, and of other Levites, and all, uh, all that could skill of instruments of music. Also they were over the bearers of burdens, and were overseers of all that wrought the work in any manner of service. And of the Levites, there were scribes and officers and porters. Josiah is making a pretty bold statement with his life at this point. He is bringing the whole kingdom back to God. He is being a good king. Um, sharply contrasted to his grandfather and his father. Let's see what else happens. Verse 14. And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. This is a very, very loaded statement. The reason being is they found a book of the law in the, they found a book of the law because they lost the book of the law for a couple generations. Under Manasseh and Amen, the word was not, was neglected. Um, the word was gone and spiritual wickedness started to run rampant, idolatry went up, and the temple went neglected. But what an amazing thing. They find the book of the law. What is both exciting and sad at the same time is where they lost the book of the law. Where did they lose the book of the law? In the temple. In the temple. This is... This is... High neglect. The, the, temp, the word was lost in the temple of the Lord. But on the flip side of the same coin, the temple of the Lord was always where the word was preserved. And so who's the temple of the Lord today? Us. And we get the choice to choose which one we want to be. 
Uh, there are many organizations, many congregations that get together a lot of the times, and wonderful people valued by God. God sees them. They're beautiful Christian believers who God loves, and he wants to upgird, and he wants to strengthen. But some of these churches, in a sense, have lost the word in the temple. The place that people are congregating to learn the word is oftentimes uh, is not really even rightly divided word. Or it's one verse and the pastor goes off on an hour about his trip to McDonald's, you know. <laughs> but the temple of the Lord also is where the word is always preserved. What is, that, what is that identification for us? We can be that temple that preserves the word of the Lord. And what a privilege. Huh? So let's see. Hilkiah, the high priest, finds the book of the law in the Lord, uh, or in the temple. And what does he do with it? Verse 15. Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servants, they do it. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord and have delivered it to the hand of the overseers and the workmen to rebuild the temple. Verse 18. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the law, that he what? Rent his clothes. He mourned. He lamented. Something beautiful just happened. Something amazing just happened. They just found the book of the law, but the king's response is lamenting. And we already know he loves God. He's taking a lot of idolatry. He's rebuilding the temple. Why is he lamenting? Commentators on this section in the Greek and the Septuagint that word the book, uh, they assume that it's possibly the book of Deuteronomy. Now, I haven't done too much study, and it could go either way in my eyes, but they found the book of the law, but the reason they think it's the book of Deuteronomy is because in the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 28 to 31, are, is the section of the blessings of following the law, what the God will do to bless his people in following the law. And it also has the curses for not following the law. The law was a covenant given to the people of Israel, and it has contractual characteristics. Uh, anybody who enters into a business contract understands this, right? All right, I will do this. We agree that the terms are this. If you will do this, I will do this. It's all written here if these terms are not met. These will be my responses to these terms. Do you agree to them? Yay or nay, sign your name at the bottom. And when they sign their name at the bottom, a contract is, uh, is in effect, pretty much. And so the children of Israel entered into a contract with God. And what was that? The law, the Mosaic law. And in that contract, they said, we will do all of your commandments. We will do all of your precepts. But Manasseh and Amon didn't do that. Josiah's grandfather and Josiah's dad didn't do that. The reason he is lamenting at this time is he understands under that contractual agreement that they might be in for some trouble. So what does he do? What does Josiah do with this? Huh? Let's see. Verse 18, Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Messiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. Josiah was a just man. He was an honest man. He understood that his grandfathers and fathers did some bad things. And he was doing his best to rectify those things. Verse 22. And Elkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Hulda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spake to her to that effect. And she answered them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me. So he's, Josiah laments, and he goes, Go to the prophet. Go to the prophet. Let's pray. Go to the prophet. Ask what we should do. 
godly man at that time. Does that? The prophet says, or the prophetess says, all right, I've received the word of the Lord. Tell this to Josiah. She answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the men that sent you to me, verse 24, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring great evil upon this place. And what he's talking about is the curses in Deuteronomy 31. And upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book, which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me, and they have burned incense unto other gods, and they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place, and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to acquire of the Lord, so shall you say unto him this. Man, this at this point, for Hilkiah to bring back this to Josiah, this must be a heartbreaking thing for Josiah. Because God says, the things that I said I'm going to do in the contractual covenant of the law, I'm going to do them. I'm going to do that. I'm a just God. I, I have to be just. But, he says this. Check this out. Verse 26. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus said the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, and when thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heard his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbles thyself before me, and did rend thy clothes and weep before me, I have heard thee also, says the Lord. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in what? Peace. Peace. Neither shall your eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. So he's saying, these bad things are going to happen. But because of you, one man, the king, because you humbled yourself before me, you will rule the kingdom, your entire leadership, in peace. Nice. It's amazing. Yeah. Let's see what Josiah's response is here. 29. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests, and the Levites, and all the people, great and small, and he what? Read in the ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. So what is he doing? He's returning them back to the Lord. He's giving the word its place among them. Um, he's reading the covenant in their ears again to all these people who have been led astray by the past kings before him, by granddad and, and uh, his father. Verse 31, and then the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord. So he's, he's rereading the covenant, the law covenant to them, and he then is also enacting a personal covenant with God. He's saying, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to write my name, particularly personally. I'm, my individual choice is going to be put on your word. Verse 31, to walk after the Lord, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in the book. Man, that's awesome. The, his, his personal promise to God is that I will follow you with all my heart, with all my soul to keep the words of this book. Verse 32, and he calls all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. So, as the king, he gathers the, all the peoples of the whole kingdom of Jerusalem and Benjamin, reads the covenant in their ears, and he calls them to stand to it, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God and the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertain to the children of Israel, and made all that were present in Israel to serve even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from following the Lord. An entire kingdom, the entire nation, because of one man's humility, departed not from following the Lord after a history of some really dark stuff. This is amazing. <laughs> Josiah is the man, an eight-year-old, who loved God. And God worked with him. And he did what he thought was best in light of not having the book of the law. And then, as he worked, as he removed idolatry out of the kingdom, as he rebuilt the temple, 
there's the word. And he cries, and he seeks God still. And God says, whew, well, it's going down, Josiah. <laughs> it is, it's going down. And what, he's, what, what God was talking about at that point was the Babylonian captivity from the northern kingdoms, Nebuchadnezzar and his armies. Uh, but, he says, but your whole life, your whole life, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before me. Your whole kingdom will be led in peace. Woo! That's awesome! <laughs> now, I say this, of course, as a history. After Josiah, um, sadly, he dies. In fact, let's, uh, let's read what happens. Uh, 2 Chronicles 35, verse 24, and... This is uh, his death. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought to him Jerusalem. And uh, brought him to Jerusalem. He died and was buried in one of the sepulchers of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Go to Jeremiah chapter 1. When Josiah died, a new king came up in his place. His name was Jehoiakim. And pretty much what he did is he led the entire nation back to darkness. He led the entire nation. He was a bad king. So it was granddaddy bad, dad bad, Josiah good, um, next of his line, bad. And then we get to Jeremiah 1. Now remember, I'm trying to give you a history coming up to Jeremiah 15, 16. Okay. Go to Jeremiah 15, actually. We'll go to Jeremiah 1 second minute, though. Jeremiah 15. Actually, no, Jeremiah 1, sir. <laughs> Say Jeremiah 1. I had it backwards. Now, check 